you damn right. Let's do it on a Wednesday. House divided. Jeff Ketchum's taking care of some things today. Orange bloods and stuff around the house and all that kind of stuff. He's dealing with a lot because, you know, he's the boss. I'm Chad Hastings. And joining me today, it is the one and only Anwar Richardson from Orange Bloods. And, of course, you see him on the old-fashioned every morning, but he's gotten coffee. I watched him take his allergy meds before the show. <laughs> first of all, and t- I, my, first of all, first of all, listen, listen. So this is what happened right before the show. Mm-hmm. I've been dealing with allergies, right? And I was like, yeah, Chad, let me just take my allergy medicine real quick. <laughs> but and I was like, wait, no, no, just so you know, it's vapor. It's the fixed vapor, mm-hmm. but it did look pretty suspect. I'm not going to lie. And so Chad has some questions. I promise you, I was never a Mets fan, not into Dwight and Doc like that. But no, 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 no. Outside, Uncle only does alcohol. That's it. That's all that's going to alcohol. But these allergies are are killer right now. I got to go see your guys, man. There you go. There you go. We'll uh, we'll have to uh, we we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to what you do if you have uh, allergies. It'll lead into it perfectly. Also, want to say uh, a shout out to everybody on the chat. We've already got people filling up the yeah. specs chat. Tracy. Tracy is in there. We got hook 'em emojis all mm. over the place. Uh, there's Brandon with one as well. And mm. if you are in this chat today, Stephen, at some point, if you're there now or you're gonna be, Stephen, I looked up your USC 05 stats, and I'm really glad I did now. We'll get into that towards the end of the show. Uh, but I did look them up. You know me. I was I was going weird on the Alabama 2020. You brought up USC 05. We'll dig mm. into that a little bit uh, a little later on as we uh, as we go. Yeah, so, But Anwar, we're going to need to start where sometimes you have to start. And we we love to start on House Divided. Portal Combat. Do it. Fight. Get over here. Finish him. Yes, indeed. As an Aggie, I figured out how to deal with my Walter Nolan problem. I just look away. Every time Mm. that graphic shows up with him in a Mm. different uniform, I just look away. I don't actually look at it. Uh, So, Anwar, we've got comings and goings. And for for Longhorns that keep up with the number, I believe we have arrived at 85 today. Uh, It was reported earlier today uh, that Jamon Tapp, is going to be in the portal, uh, has put his name in the portal. So this is a third-year, I guess, third-year player, redshirt sophomore, if I'm doing the math correctly here, uh, which I think does get Texas to 85. Anwar, it's a guy, Ketch has been talking about it, kind of fits the profile of a guy you're going to need to watch for maybe a portal in his third year. But when you look at production, he's literally participated in nine total games, Mm -hmm. and he's got and he had eight tackles last year, I think that's right. Or maybe it's nine total nine tackles. Nine tackles, I believe. Nine tackles, Chad. There you go. Nine total tackle. Yeah, nine tackles. Uh, and then I think he's been in about that many games. So when your number of total tackles and your number of games participated in is about even, and you're going into year three, I think that's where nobody should be really surprised on where to see Tap's name. Yeah, I mean, so you just start off that. The, the good thing I would say for Tap, uh, Chad, that helps him out is that he did play on special teams. So for him being able to get some time on special teams helps him out. Alex had some stats earlier as far as he did play a lot in, in the Baylor game. He did get a lot of uh, activity. I think he played in Baylor, played against Tech, played a lot of blowout games, right? So he'll have that. He's got some special teams experience, but to your point, when we start talking about that profile, I went and kind of picked up something. So I, I went to Alex's projected uh, spring defensive depth chart, and you allow me to put that on the screen for you, Chad, yeah. because I think this this helps with the thing that you're talking about, right? So if you look at Alex's depth chart projections, right. And for this is now, Alex uses Microsoft Excel, so that's judgment free <laughs> zone here. I, I don't, I don't have a, a, a horse in this race, right? Mm-hmm. But you look at okay, if you look at the, the the key on the bottom, which is the freshman is in the green, obviously the red shirts are in the red, uh-huh. juniors, and then of course the seniors, right? Now all you've got to do 
is start working your way from the bottom up, right? Because you see who the, the top guys are, right? Yeah. And so when you start looking at tap, and then you see him there at the edge buck position, and then you see him as a sophomore, you start saying to yourself, okay, maybe he starts going into that, that, that category. You start looking at the juniors. So then you go to that jack position. You look at the Justice Finkley on the side. Does he kind of fit that profile that you're talking about, right? And so obviously Savea has already come in here. So you start looking for that, that yellowish, kind of blackish towards the bottom, uh, and it starts making sense. But more importantly, honestly, Chad, if you just look at where Billy Walton was, even though he was a red shirt, mm-hmm. you look at where Top was, it makes sense, right, for where these guys were on the depth chart. It makes total sense that you say to yourself, all right, that's a guy, those guys kind of fit the profile. What about McDonald? What happens there? You know, those that's that's kind of where we're at as far as that is, is concerned. So it makes sense as far as he as far as what Alice had projected. And to your point now, when we go back to where that scholarship board was, I I asked someone to send me an updated one and uh-huh. everyone ignored me on, on, <laughs> on the team. So I'll I'll deal with that another time. But this is what it was <laughs> before tap. So before tap. We were looking at 86 there, Chad. Yeah. Now you remove top, just remove top from the list. You should be at that 85, yeah. which is where you need. Now, of course, the, when you start talking about bringing in guys, you're going to need some more attrition. You're right. going to get at least guys. one more, right? Yeah, you're going to need at least one more. You probably want a couple of more to go, just to be honest with you, just to give you some options to just to get under that number. And there'll probably be more than that. But right now, with top going, they're right at that 85 that they need to be in. And then, of course, just probably needing some more guys just to say to themselves, you know what? I, I think I'm okay going somewhere else. And, Chad, let me say this. Let me say this before we, we go too far down there. You know, what? what is the movie when they say that when it says about the Mexican mafia doesn't believe in coincidences? I feel like that was maybe like a Brad Pitt movie or something mm-hmm. to that effect. Don't uh, recognize him. Don't recognize that uh, line. I think and maybe maybe it'd been snow or something to that effect. I forget. It was something to that effect, right? Mm-hmm. But nonetheless, we've had now three guys outside of Burrell. We've had four guys going, and I understand why Burrell left, right? That that made all the sense in the world. Some things happened. It made all the sense in the world for him to leave. But we're seeing the Kirklands, you know, will leave. We've seen Billy Walton leave. Now we're seeing Tap leave. And all these guys are leaving before the spring game, Chad. They're not even waiting to see, well, can I just get some more film? They're like, I don't think I'm going to get any more film. <laughs> I, think, right. I think what I got is what I got. And you know what? Let me just beat the line. Let me beat the line to the transfer portal. I'm not going to wait until next week. And I'm just going to I'm just going to beat the rush and get in there before everybody else can so I can hopefully – secure a spot before everyone else does. I don't feel like this is all coincidence. I feel like most of these people, they they figured out the tea leaves, whether they have been read the tea leaves by someone on the staff or they figured it out on their own. But three guys going in, I think it makes, they, they understand like, hey, no need to hang around for Saturday. Let me just go ahead and get out of here. And the other thing, Anwar, is if you absolutely know you're going, like if there's no discussion period, if a meeting with Sark afterwards on the 22nd is not going to do you any good in your mind, if you're gone, yeah. why play the spring game? Why put why put the possibility of twist something, pull something, mm-hmm. just you know, make sure you can maximize that opportunity. So Jamon Tap into the portal, that is... If it gets, if the number is eighty-five, if we're doing our math right, that would mean one more needs to be in the portal. If you're going to get somebody added to the team, which will yeah. bring us to another story uh, that we will get to. Folks are piling into the chat. We do appreciate you there. Let's talk about some of our great sponsors, and we'll start with the Deep Eddie Vodka Ooh. Tasting Room, kids. I talked to the folks out at the Deep Eddie Vodka Tasting Room, and guess what they're doing for you? Orange Bloods, people. They're cooking up. An Orange Bloods cocktail. As soon as it's available and we can tell you what it's called, you'll be able to go out and order it. Not on the menu. Like a special, like an old school speakeasy style. You'll be able to say the name and they'll get it for you. And there might even be a discount for you. So just keep that under your hat. We'll let you know when that's ready. But they're ready for you right now at the Deep Eddie Vodka Tasting Room. It's so much fun out there. 
Thursdays and Fridays, 11 to 7, 11 to 5 on Saturdays, 12 to 5 on Sunday. So double check your weather in Central Texas. You know you got to always do that, and we'll get to that with the spring game. And get on out to Deep Eddie Vodka Tasting Room. Eight different kinds of vodka. The cocktails are awesome, or you can just slow sip it with some flights if you want. Uh, get on out there. Tell them we sent you here at Orange Bloods Live, the Deep Eddie Vodka tasting hey, room. I went out uh, one time, by the way, Deep Eddie Vodka tasting room. Mm -hmm. uh, before they even be partnered uh, with us here, that was a fun time out there, man. Just being yeah. able to that. I got a flat and just try. I, I forget how many vodkas came on the flat that it was, but I, I, I enjoyed it. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I, I, I enjoyed it. I, that, now that you say it, I, I need to head back. I, I need to head back. Man, it's good, good stuff. Now, if for some reason you cannot get out to the Deep Eddie Vodka Tasting Room, remember the good folks at Specs have all eight flavors of that Deep Eddie Vodka for you. Or maybe you need to get stocked up on something else. Here's Lisa with a reminder. You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets, it's Specs. Cheers to savings. All right, so we always tell you, if you send us a super chat, it goes right to the top of the list, and other people might need to know this too. So Texas Tornado, thank you. $5 US. Where do you watch the spring game on Spectrum Cable and what time? Texas Tornado, I'm glad you asked. I am a Spectrum uh, person myself. Uh, mm -hmm. The spring game is going to be on your Longhorn Network, and LHN is 383 on Spectrum, and it's a 1 o'clock start. Wow. You have that memorized? Heck yeah. That's amazing. That's yeah. a, that's a, that's a, a no, so there's two things that have that, that find, I find fascinating to that, right? One, that you have that memorized. Props to you. Thank you. Thank two, you. you have resisted the cord cutting edge. You oh, yes, I have. I'm an old man, Anwar. I love yeah. nothing more. Like, I'm not telling you I don't have streaming services in my house. We do have mm -hmm. some of those. But as an old man, I value the ability to be able to fast forward, pause, and rewind. Yeah. at a maximum level and i haven't found anything that does it better than the dvr like that streaming stuff you got to just let it roll if you're on not ESPN, with youtube tv not with youtube tv YouTube i can do TV the same is, thing youtube tv is better still okay. not as good as my dvr dude let me tell you last weekend with the masters i don't watch live golf like mm -hmm. ever if i unless i have to i start about two or three hours after it starts and then i can fast forward and follow the groups and follow scotty and follow who i need to Anwar, yeah. it's heaven, and I can't do it that way with a streaming service. So you can I've been do it. It, it, it test, test guy too says you can do it with YouTube. And listen, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this, Chad. Mm -hmm. I'm an old guy too. I think I think I'm actually older than yourself. And I uh it took me a while. I was like, I um I need my spectra, I need my my I got and I got all the cake, the wires back there and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> and then, and I finally finally said you know what enough of this i'm gonna i'm just gonna try i'm gonna go into youtube tv i'm just gonna yep. get my thing and i gotta tell you it's been great haven't noticed a huge difference been great for me to you know go on the road and i could watch certain things since i could do a spectrum for a yep. fraction of the cost i'm just i'm just telling you you're fine I, but certain people like to get their newspapers delivered in the morning i understand you I, know, I, I got you yeah and some people still like their 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 their, their plug-in stuff but I, I'm just saying, if you ever, ever want to get modern, just, 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 yeah, YouTube TV is not too bad. I'm just going to throw it out there. Okay, fair enough. Out. Hey, and remember, I've got Sunday ticket with YouTube TV. I got that too. So <laughs> I got, look, I get a taste of YouTube TV as well as, I got all kinds of, I got way too much going on. Way yeah. too much going on right now. I know, man. Old Next man. Time. Old, old, old man, Chad. I just <laughs> like my cable. Old or man. <laughs> I like my old channels. Kids, get up and change the channel for me, please. I need my NPR right now. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, so it is. Uh, yes, and now we're getting some TV discussions uh, over there. And yes, for text okay. guy, even an Aggie can do it. There you go. Ah, with the smart ass spelling as well. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Um, so. Anwar, we talked about somebody headed into the portal. Jamon Tap makes it 85. It's going to need to be one more guy. There needs to be at least one more guy that goes if this next story is going to finish because earlier today, Jeff Ketchum over at orangebloods.com uh, reported that he is hearing that big Bill Norton, who we've been talking about from Arizona, the big D tackle, he will visit this weekend. 
He's coming in. Remember, in the old days, it was all about recruits visiting. But now, Anwar, we also mix oh, in yeah. transfer portal visits. Bill yeah. Norton is coming in for the spring game. Yeah, and, it, you know, as, as Ketch has reported uh, on our website, it's it, it it seems like this is a legit, like a real possibility that Bill Norton will be coming in here visiting all goes well uh and then you know he exits potentially this weekend as a longhorn i don't think catches added that portion on i'm i'm adding in that in there but mm-hmm. as i read his report and then read some of the comments that he put in there and then kind of piecing it together it seems like that Bill Norton is legit thing. So it seems like the it seems like what happened here as relates to this, that should have been Bear Alexander, right? It, it, it seems like Bear Alexander was the target. Bear Alexander is what a guy that catch says was supposed to be the guy that was coming in this weekend, to the point that catch has said, Hey, I, they had a press release ready to go about Bear Alexander becoming a Longhorn. I'm not saying that. I'm saying this is what Ketch has mentioned and had what he has said on orangebloods.com. You need Mm -hmm. to be on there. We're not going to keep giving out all the free stuff, right? But (laughs) it is that Bear Alexander, that was a done deal. It ends up getting out, and it ends up being one of the ex-handlers that ends up putting out that information. And, of course, USC is able to sweep in, take care of everything, and all of a sudden now he's he's back at USC. So, of course, Texas moves on. And then Texas moves on to, to Bill Norton, and now this seems to be where the, the, the direction that it's trending, the direction that it's heading is that, you know, Texas needs needs a guy. And, and look, Chad, the, the fascinating thing, right, is that Sarkeesian had said, hey, one of the reasons that we went out in the transfer portal and we added all these receivers. Because I didn't just have a lot of guys with a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. I want to go into it. And I have guys who just hadn't been started. So he went out and they they go out and they get, you know, Isaiah Bond, right? They get Matthew Golden, right? They get uh, Isaiah um, <laughs> Silas Bolden. Uh, yeah. I, I always get these names confused. I, mean, I got, I know. I, it's, it's, it is literally, it's like you have to take a re quiz. Isaiah Bond, Matthew yes. Golden, Silas, Silas Bolden. Bolden. I, like, I wish they all didn't didn't rhyme, you know. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, he's he and went out and got guys who had some experience. So if, if then that the same would apply to the defensive room, especially within that tackle position, needing some guys who have that experience. And look, it was easy. I think it was easy to to say, okay, you know, you had Keandre Coburn, you had Moro Jomo. Okay, switch now to Devondre Sweat. And Byron Murphy, and, but now I look going from those guys. I, let, we we can't say like, hey, you have two potential you first rounders, right? And Sweat's obviously his stock has dipped, right? But he played like a first rounder last season. They need guys that they don't have a guy that really checks the box right now. You know, be, yeah. you're, you're hoping and projecting as it relates to Alfred Collins, and you're giving him. You know, that thought, that measure of grace that, okay, maybe he'll go ahead and do that. And you're hoping projecting as relates to Vernon Broughton, but you don't necessarily know that. And so you've got to hope. So now if you can bring in someone that at least checks the box, that at the very least is solid behind them as a rotational player, sure, that's what Bill Norton does. Now, I will tell you this. I did a show this morning uh, with, with Alex Dunlap. And it's very interesting what, what Papa Sorrell is, is saying right here because he says uh, Broughton might leave. Uh, so they, there might be the, 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 the other thing as relates to Norton. Uh, Alex has watched him, watch Bill Norton play. Not impressed. <laughs> he, he, really? he is not impressed. He okay. said he's probably going to have to write something that almost gives him a Trill Carter comparison. So Ooh, he, okay. he, he, he said go back and watch the game versus Oklahoma and watch it and analyze it. That's just, that's what his challenge was this morning. Go back and watch the game versus Oklahoma okay. and, sh- and show me what you see. Because he, yeah. he wasn't that impressed by him at all. In terms of just pure numbers, Anwar, for people that are wondering, because I know Ketch believes, uh, I saw his note today on orangebloods.com, he believes that this would be an upgrade over Vernon Broughton. For people that hadn't looked at the numbers, 
Last year, Broughton had 17 total tackles, and Walton is up at and Walton. Um, um, I just Norton, lost it. Norton, Norton. Norton, thank you. See, I'm doing Walton. Yeah, Norton see, now. see the, the Ryman yeah. thing? It, it, it's a thing. It's a yeah. thing. Norton has 31, 31 total tackles from last year. So oh, over twice as many tackles, um, you know, at, at, at what you would assume is basically that same position. So just an idea, and people are throwing in, uh, you know, on the chat about is he better than this guy or not. But for me, Anwar, this is just like the receiver conversation in multiple ways. One of them is it is a rotational position. This one more so really than receiver. You're going to be rotating. And it's not that to me, the messaging to Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton is really simple. It's like, hey, fellas, we're not saying we don't believe in you. We're not. We are saying that as the games progress, your lungs are going to need a break. That's what we're that's what we're saying. And we're going to bring some folks in to help that rotation. Like, I think the argument's pretty easy. So if I'm a Texas fan, I really hope this doesn't, this doesn't, you know, push Vernon Broughton towards making that decision. Vernon Broughton's one of those guys on war that needs to take that next step, not take a step out the door. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I, 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 listen, you know, Vernon Broughton doesn't necessarily care about me or, or, or my opinions. Um, but if I was him, I, I would stay here. And yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think it makes sense to to go somewhere else. You know, you you're here, you're established, and you know you can have someone tell you that hey, it makes sense, go somewhere else. You're going to play all this other kind of things, or you can come in here, you know, get your PT. You you're still competing for a starting position. You you have a starting position at this moment, uh, but to leave it uh, and then go somewhere else. I don't necessarily do that. No, would I do it because you know they, they're bringing in some guy named Bill Bill Norton, uh, you know, as a grad student, uh, you know, to compete against you. I, I, I'll say this: there's no disrespect to Bill Norton, even though it's probably going to sound like a, a disrespect. So it's one of those things, like, hey, I, yeah, I would not going to be insulting here. Never. It never works, Anwar. It, then, and then you go ahead and insult somebody. Yeah. It, if Bill Norton was all that, he'd be in the NFL uh, draft at this moment, getting mm -hmm. ready uh, for next week. Let's just let's just keep it real. If right. he was all that, it, and and something that you'd say to yourself, this guy's the next whatever. He's already graduated. He would be pursuing his his dream to play in the NFL. He clearly isn't good enough to do that. So if I'm Vernon Broughton, I'm not necessarily. I, I yeah, they're going to bring him in, but I'm, they're not bringing in someone to you should say to yourself like damn i don't even know what's going to happen here no you still have you're still vernon broughton you still have a chance to hold this thing down and that guy could be a person that plays behind you and, you and you'll be fine before we leave the the transfer discussion drew brings up something interesting says talk about ogbo's probability mm -hmm. of transferring so this is you know to the offensive line side of it and kind of an interesting comparison to what we were just saying so this is another sophomore but if i'm reading it correctly third year guy on war and it was about nine games for tap we said with ogbo it's 15 games so well, you're looking and now there you go we'll pull up the offensive version of what you what you pointed out earlier and we're going to which o-line position am i looking at here uh, right there at the at, like the tight end position. So look at look at the very bottom in the oh, middle. Go wow. Ahead. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's where Agbo is at this moment. You know, right. so, you know he he was at the tight end. This is this is obviously, uh, but you talk about the behind. But again, he's kind of a guy without with really without a home right now. We're just being quite honest with you because yeah. he was playing on offensive line, and not really yeah. much in there. He's on a defensive, uh, you know, I'd rather a, a tight end position. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the guys he's behind, yeah. I mean, he's got to really decide to himself, well, what, what's he here for? Uh, can you, Chad, what's his major? What's Ogbo's major? Can you look that up for me? Let I, me. Let me I, Alex has come up with a really. A, it says exercise science here. Okay, so that's nothing that you need to stay at UT to complete. Ah, okay. So. Because Alex's, Alex's theory is when he looks at the majors of guys and the guys, let's say, business in the Macomb school, well, that guy's not transferring, right? He's going right, he's you want going, to finish that. He's going to finish that. But if he's doing something else that you can just go ahead and apply in another school, then all right. So if it's, if it's, if it's exercise science, uh, no disrespect to anyone who's, in the, who's an exercise science major, 
Yeah, Agbo would be a person that if you start looking at profiles, he would he would kind of fit the profile as to like really buried on the depth chart. Um, yep. and that's that was Alice's projected depth chart. Um, and then a guy that you say to yourself, All right, there's that. There. Can I say one thing though, Chad, before mm -hmm. we get off the transfer portal thing? Yeah. This is the fascinating thing. I, I, I've raised this point, and I think um, Ketch did so yesterday, but I'll, I'll, I'll reemphasize it. Since Sark has been here and guys have gone into the portal, there hasn't been a guy who has left that you've said to yourself, damn, that hurts. Like, damn, how did he recover from that? It, not like, let's say, the other year where Caleb Williams leaves – and then there's the band that goes with him. And then you're and you're mm -hmm. Oklahoma, and you're saying to yourself, man, whew, we gotta we gotta really recover from that. You gotta get bring in a deal of Gabriel and hope Jackson Arnold's really ready to go. And it, it you haven't seen that here. The yeah. guys who have left, quite honestly, you have just been guys. There haven't been a single person that I think Sark has lost any sleep over. There hasn't been a single person that has made a dent. And even of the guys who have gone into the portal so far, all four of them. There hasn't been a single person that you said to yourself, whew, well, how's Texas going to recover from this one? And so if you're a Texas fan, I think the good thing that you can say is no matter who has left, no matter who has gone, the, it hasn't taken a hit. You haven't looked to yourself and said, how, how do you recover? There hasn't been a Barry Sorrell that's left, right? You haven't lost – a, a, you know, you've lost Hudson Card. That's might be the the most devastating loss that you've had, or maybe a junior angle out. That, and I don't even think either one was devastating. Uh, you haven't really lost anything. So there may be guys who go, but these guys are going to be probably the bottom tier and the top guys, the guys who that are really in the too deep. Those guys have stayed. And, and the remaining at Texas. And so everybody else who goes, that's just a deficit situation, but there hasn't been a painful loss so far. Yeah, I think it's a great point. And then if you're a Texas fan, not only you brought up one of the rivals, it certainly isn't what the Aggies went through after. Yeah. Now the Aggies obviously went through a coaching change too, but obviously you're not losing anybody that made Aggie, that, that made a fan feel the way Aggie fans felt when Nolan and Stewart left. Yeah. I mean, that's Correct. a whole whole different vibe. And even uh, Camtown say Malik Murphy, Malik Murphy leaving only meant that Arch Manning was going to be the 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 quarterback. And I don't think anybody right. was blinking and saying, "Oh man, that's a huge loss." Like that that wasn't a huge loss. Texas fans understood that Malik Murphy was never going to start here at Texas. He was never. If, if Quinn Ewers went pro then we all understood that Arch Manning was going to be the guy this following year. And then Quinn Ewers coming back just meant that Malik Murphy would just compete against Arch, but next year that Arch is going to be the starter. So nobody even said to themselves, oh, Malik Murphy, that's a huge loss. Everybody said, congratulations, you made the right decision because you were never really going to be a starter here anyway. Again, I go back to my point. There has not been a huge loss. I think you're right. I think you're right. So Jamon Tapp into the portal for Texas. Bill Norton, the Arizona DT, will be visiting Texas this weekend. Texas sitting at 85 right now. We'll keep our eyes peeled for the rest of it. Before we get to some questions I've got for Anwar, and we've got mm. somebody on the chat asking an interesting, um, well, the, the question about the spring game that has nothing to do with, you know, football X's and O's that everybody needs to know about. We'll get to that. But first, let me talk about AV consultations a little bit. If you're bringing the folks over for the spring game, I'm letting you know you got 136 days, Longhorn fans, from today. 136 days from now is you against Colorado State. You make sure you have the screen you need or the screens that you need or a projection screen outside. They can do that for you at AV consultations. The very latest in audio equipment, the very latest in the TVs, the very latest, all that cool furniture. Let them do it all. Let them do everything. Don't run around town and go, I'm going to go to the box store and I'm going to do this. No, no. They can get a better deal on the TV than you can. They've been doing this since 1988, lugging those big heavy versions of the TVs back then. Now they can do it with the lightweight versions and do so much cool stuff for you. It will blow your mind. AV consultations. They even still believe in phone calls. 255 
888-789-8678. You'll get that personal touch. They will make sure you're satisfied before they are done. They will treat you right all the way through. And like I said, they've been doing it since 1988. AV Consultations, uh, avconsultations.com or go 255 eight six seven eight and again the spring game is one o'clock on saturday at least mm -hmm. that is what we are hoping uh fingers crossed anwar let's get to the question i asked you and uh mr torres brings it up on the chat what's the status of the game with rain and lightning forecasted on saturday anwar i give a credit to one of our fans yesterday said hey guys i'm seeing 80 percent i look it up this morning and i'm seeing like 95 percent in the day 96 percent at night on Saturday. So yeah. in your mind, do you think of this as if rain goes down, what, they go into the bubble and just tough luck for everybody? Or is there something else? I think it's tough luck for everybody. Uh, so and, and here's here's what here's what was explained to me previously. First of all, officially I've, I've before the show um i was told that none of the discussions have been had at this point and that would be something that they discuss later this week okay okay I, I someone had asked me last year about maybe the possibility of doing like watch parties in the stadium as texas was on the road and towards the end of the year like could they do a watch party in the stadium so everybody can kind of get together and I, I ran that past the, uh, the, the athletic department, the, 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 the people that really count. Okay. So, you know, I'm not, I talk about, you know, I, the, the real conversation that need to be had. And they said to me the the hard part is ATX, at the ATX big rich. Yes. Thank you. It was ATX big rich. who asked that question. And I, it, and I'll re reiterate the hard part is from a logistics standpoint, Chad, when to, in order to open up like the stadium, right? You've got to hire the security personnel. You've got to hire the, have the workers that are there, the concession stand people. But also, you've got to hire the police who are outside the stadium to try to guide people in, guide people out. Um, and then the other challenge that they would have, as far as like like said, say opening up to the stadium, was hiring having security at different levels of the stadium to make sure that people don't go into offices and, you know, go into different places that they don't need to be and get on the roof and all these other kind of things. So <laughs> you, when you start thinking about, okay, what does it take to put on an, an event? It takes a lot, right? It takes, it takes a lot of, of manpower and hours and there's a money that's being spent in order to pull off that event to be able to plan all of that and cut all those checks for Saturday to then say, well, we'll just do it next week. Like, that's 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 a, that's a hard thing to do. It's a hard ass, right? Especially you're going to have finals coming up for the for players. You know, they've got to get wrap up the semester, so on and so forth. So I think what will end up happening is if for some reason they can't do it, it's just going to be like, sorry, but they probably would have to go into the bubble uh, and finish off what they need to finish off. And it'll just be an unfortunate thing that unfortunately the fans cannot attend. But I think logistics, all the planning that it takes just to pull off one event, it's not as simple as, oh, let's just do it tomorrow. Like there's just yeah. too many things that you have to plan in yeah. order to pull it off. And I just don't know how, how, how they would be able to do that. That would be the only, to me, that is the only option. If they could take everything and just go, because I'm seeing Sunday is like 24% chance and cloudy, but that's mm -hmm. right now. We know weather can change very quickly and these forecasts change quickly. So yeah, that might be the only option, but we are, but just like Sark talked about, and we'll get into a little bit of what he said to you guys yesterday on war at the, the media event, but you know, he pointed it out like, look, you guys look at things like spring games coming up and fans want the spring game. Well, we're focused on, we just had practice 13 which means practice number 14 comes up tomorrow. And practice number 15 is the spring game. Everybody else calls it the spring game, but Sark thinks about it as, well, that's practice 15. And then mm -hmm. once practice 15 is over, spring is over. And like you said, why would you want to extend that? You got your schedule. You got your plan. You're not going to extend that to too far anyway, Not to certainly not to the next week. Uh, but could you extend it one day? That might be the, my question. But Mr. Torres... Hey, we all got to pay attention to it. We'll be checking it each and every day as we uh, as we get closer 
to uh, to Saturday. Uh, wish wish that wasn't the case, but we all know the weather can get a little weird um, around here. So hopefully uh, yeah. everything will be all right. By the and way, by the way, I just I just decided to go ahead and just block Camp Town, Texas. Uh, I I uh, I try I've tried to be patient with him. Last like yesterday, he was talk, came on here. He's really just dis- disrespectful, mm-hmm. um, and I, I try to be patient and 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 loving with him. And then he just kind of continues with it. So for all the y'all in the chat chat. Don't worry about Camtown Trash. I have to come back with a different alias uh, in order to do what he needs to do. But uh, I just don't got time for that negativity in my life. So he could, he, if he loves, if he loves, if you love other shows, go watch them and support them. But don't come over here uh, with the negativity. We don't. There it is. Okay. Anwar is looking for positivity. Kurt gave it to him right away. Chad and Anwar, good afternoon. Cheers from the Ozarks. Ooh. Kurt, hope you're having a good day in the Ozarks. A little. Be careful with those hook'em emojis in the Ozarks. They get a little, they get a little, <laughs> little sensitive. Uh, Anwar, have you ever been to a game at Arkansas? You would have gone to the game that previous game, right? Yeah, I, went, I, I did go. I did go to uh, the uh, the Arkansas game. I went. So when I was there, I forget what the name of the city. First of all, I went to a restaurant. I think it's called like Orange. I believe was the name of the the restaurant. Really good. Come to find out, the person who owned it was a Longhorn fan. Mm. And he at really cool a really, really cool place. He, he he saw me I guess on his cameras at home and uh and then actually went ahead and like just just took care of my meal. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I was I was okay. really impressed by that. So the, it is like oh the owner says he likes he, he loves orange boys, he's a big fan. So so I went on the, on the the tour with the Walmart, original Walmart was and they had like some little fair there that I, surprisingly it was not as bad of a trip as I thought it was going to be. I actually was was cool okay. with Arkansas. I'm just going to say that I had low expectations and I actually was cool with it. I actually am not I'm not I'm not I'm actually I hate I, I'm actually looking forward to going back. That's impressive. All right. I wasn't expecting yeah. to hear that. I, I wasn't I, that either. No, <laughs> I can I, tell that, you that good. much. I was I, that either. I'm glad there's one positive story. I would have told every Longhorn fan I know, stay away from that trip. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be something once it once it comes to November. Uh, thanks to everybody for jumping in the Specs chat. Damn near 600 folks in there. We will get to those USC 05 numbers uh, coming up, and I did enjoy looking that up. But first, like Anwar said, we're about the positivity. We don't want the negativity, and that is definitely what our man Andy is all about at My Perfect Franchise. He's not about, it's not called My Negative Franchise. It's not called Downer Fran. No, it's, it's called My Perfect Franchise. He helps a whole bunch of folks make that dream come true. If you've got an idea, a side hustle idea, you want something, you want the side hustle to become the main hustle, you want two main hustles, you want two main hustles and a side hustle. He can help you set all that up. And uh, here are your multiple ways to do it. You want to go myperfectfranchise.net. You can also just email him there. Uh, or it is 404-973-9901. Uh, Orange Blood swears by My Perfect Franchise and the way Andy does it. Find out for yourself today. All about the positivity with My Perfect Franchise. Thank you for those chats that are rolling in. Uh, ben G joins the chat with the other side. I didn't enjoy the Fayetteville trip. All right, Ben. Really? There you go. There well, you I'm gonna. Go. I, I'm what I'm doing right now, Chad. Is I, I I found the name of the restaurant. It was called Big Orange, right? I took. Okay. A picture, I put. I took a picture of the meal. Um, I'm actually. I'm, I'm going to. I'm sending it to myself within the net within a minute. I want to have this up here. And I think you guys are going to say to yourself, like, wow, okay, maybe next time you guys go, you just actually need to come and hang with me. And I'll show yeah. you some of the cool spots that we can hang at. Uh, but hold on, I've got, I, I got this thing coming right here, Chad. You're right. going to say to yourself, um, damn, Anwar, you, you actually did it good. Hold on one second. I never thought we'd be discussing from a tourism standpoint. Come see Anwar's Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. hold on, hold on. Wait, I have it in, in less than 10 seconds. Watch this, Chad. You're gonna say to yourself, and you're are you are you a burger guy? Uh, I love Chad? burgers. Love burgers. All right, here we go. Here we go. Let me put Ty- this on the screen. Tyler says Fayetteville is an awesome college town, great restaurants, and beautiful in November. Hey now, that looks like something that looks like something to go after right there. 
Yes, that that was that was the meal that I had that I had, Chad, and they, and they, with an old fashioned, with a nice nice oh, old that's fashion, nice. uh, and they made it good. I told not they, 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 they you know sometimes people try to make an old fashioned, it's horrible. Yeah, this was pretty good. So, but next time you go to the Argonaut Star trip, Big Orange, he's actually. A, I don't know. I don't know if he wants to broadcast to everybody, but he's apparently who he, the owner is a Longhorn fan. Okay, uh, and and so anyway, it's just worth checking out. Just throwing it out there. There's three things I see in that picture, Anwar, that okay. would get me excited as a burger fan because I like the details. I can tell three key details have been dealt with. Okay, because I can't really see the patty in this picture. I can tell the bacon has been has been uh, uh, thoroughly thought out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can tell that is not an ordinary bun, mm -hmm. and I can tell that the that they care about pickles. I can tell. Oh. <laughs> I can tell they're not using some ordinary, average from the grocery store pickle. <laughs> That's not what's happening with that burger. Yes, yeah, it was it was a fantastic burger. So hey, I, I understand for you. Some people are like, man, I don't know if I want to go there. I'm just saying, just not one too bad. So look and at this. Now. To know, is Fayetteville okay for minorities to visit? <laughs> You're gonna be okay. See the the, the key to me that, that that question, Anwar. I don't know if the key is just the word minority. I would just re replace it with, "Is it okay for Longhorns to visit?" My fear is that Longhorn fans will be treated just horribly badly in Fayetteville. Because I've heard a lot of stories. Now, Paul says for $4.99 on a super chat. Thank you, Paul. Fayetteville was not what I expected. Very pretty. Lots of hills. I took a photo of the wall where Baker got tackled by the cop. <laughs> now, that, see, Anwar, with all due respect to the first Walmart, yes. the Baker wall, I mean, that's that's a big time that's a big time place to visit right there. Uh yeah, and I got I got I got one more. So so you know what would it be would have surprised you a little bit about me? Though even though I have a lack of weight, I actually am a foodie. I, okay. I, I love food, I love trying different foods. I'm gonna show you what I had for breakfast on okay. my Arkansas trip. Now you, yeah. here's here's another one. Here's another okay. one. Here you go. Ooh. Okay. So we've got some sort of chicken fry, or is this like a chicken and waffles with eggs on top? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm yeah. trying that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there, there was a lot. I'm telling, there was some good eating out there. Not, not just some. You know, I, this is. I had, I had that for breakfast out there. So I'm just letting you guys know. We're sleeping on Arkansas. I okay. know we like to make jokes about it. I had some really good food uh, out there. I, I'm not like a going out to like a bars kind of guy. Uh, but I had some really good food. I'm a foodie. I like to try different stuff. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Right. Fair enough. That's cool. And I didn't realize we were going to end up talking so much Arkansas today. That trip is uh, that trip is coming up, Longhorn fans. Yeah. Maybe you want to uh, maybe you want to plan for it. Uh, all right, over 600 folks in the specs chat. We do appreciate you. We got the portal information out to you. Jamon tap into the portal um, officially. And Bill Norton of the Arizona D tackle is apparently going to visit this weekend, come in for the spring game, get to see Johnny Nansen again. Everybody knows that connection, right? His former DC is now the linebackers coach, but that connection's got to be big on war Texas fans. I know have been wondering, they want to see the impact on the defense in a positive way for Nansen getting a, mm -hmm. getting a, um, a DC to be a position coach that should elevate some things. But if they can end up with a guy like Norton and he's actually pretty good because of the because of Nansen, that's just a bonus. Yeah, you know, I think you know the more that Kenny Baker has to work with, the better. You know, and and, and, and this is it's a, you, you mentioned Nansen, I mentioned Baker. You know, and 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 the, the two aren't necessarily mutually, mutually exclusive. You know, from a recruiting standpoint, we, we, I don't think we have high expectations for Kenny Baker. At this moment, and it doesn't mean he won't be, but we understand that he get he got hired late in the recruiting process. He's playing catch up to a lot of guys right now, so it'll take him some time. So you know, year one, you won't necessarily judge him as a recruit. What you'll judge him on is his ability to to coach and develop talent like that. That's what we were sold on as relates to Baker. Like this is what he can do: is he can coach, he can teach, he's got the X's and O's down, and he can communicate that. 
you, know, you now bring in some guys for him to work with. Some of these guys who, especially a guy like Norton, who, you know, you don't, maybe you don't have to teach as much. You know, maybe there's just a couple of little things here and there. You fine tune a few things and then you have them hit the ground running. So you know, being able to give him more tools, more guys to work with, more guys from the interior, especially Chad has been talking about playing in the SEC which we know that's power football, but mm -hmm. we know that other side of the line, you had got a good offensive lineman in the trenches week in and week out. Not necessarily what you see in the Big 12. You're not going to see that kind of caliber in the Big 12 as far as offensive linemen from one yeah. side to another. You're going to see that here. And so the more guys that you can bring in, since they say to rotate in, to compete at the high level, you know, there's only a few guys on the defensive line that I know check the box that I know can do it. So the more guys that you can bring in just in case, if you can bring in a Norton and have him come in, if he's got the relationship with Nancy and he's looking for a home, he's only got one year, uh, and then he's going to be out, yet yeah, then Texas is the place for him, and Texas has a need because, Chad, there's not, there's not guys in front of you that you say to yourself, all right, that, that that guy is untouchable, right? You say, yeah. quit. That guy is untouchable. I don't care who you bring in. You're not going to really have anybody that's going to start ahead of him, right? So you look right. at other positions. You know, you can look at the, uh, all the positions around the, the field. Anthony Hill, for instance, Kelvin Banks. These guys are untouchable. Those are your guys. The defensive tackle position, there haven't been guys who established themselves, Chad, that you say to yourself, no, 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 no. That 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 guy. No, you say to yourself, no, no, no. I want I want to bring in co competition and have guys competing in in because I don't necessarily have the guy that I know checks the box and I know for sure what I'm going to get out of. And until you have that, you don't have it. So Norton helps with that. Yeah, and the other thing we got to pay attention to, Anwar, we, we you know it's got to be happening at every other, all other fan bases and the national perspective on Texas going to the SEC is is it sustainable, mm -hmm. or was last year a flash in the pan? And the thing that can't happen for Texas, they cannot get run on a lot because if they do, what are people going to bring up, Anwar? Where'd your DC come from? Pac-12. Mm -hmm. Where'd your linebacker coach come from? Pac-12. Hey, where'd that D-tackle transfer come from that you got? Pac-12. They're going to do it over and over again. Anwar, this just in, SEC fans think their conference is pretty cool. <laughs> right? They think yeah. they know how to do it, and others don't quite know how to do it. So, but, 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 the, but the thing Longhorn fans will are riding on right now is they looked absolutely SEC-ready in Tuscaloosa last year. Yeah, but but they also packed their sweat and they packed their Murphy for that one. Correct. And those two guys will be in the NFL. So we just got to watch it all play out. But that is going to be a factor that people will look at. Um, you know, you you get a guy from Arizona in the middle of your defensive line, the guys you're counting on, and that guy, they can't get pushed around. And I mean, <laughs> I mean, what is Daddy's? I mean, Daddy Sorrell's fired up. Come but you talking about hey, I told him, you know, you know, you know how he came up with it with, with why he changed his name, right? I do. <laughs> you told him to. You know what? This really is your fault, Anwar. You told him to get on the porch. I he got him, on the I porch. Said, stay on your porch. I he, told him. I, I called him out and I said, yeah. "You got to stay on your porch." And I said, "I don't like that after the season. I didn't hear from you and this and that like that. And you got to stay." So, so in response, he has changed his name to on the porch, Sorrell. And by the way, I like on the porch Sorrell. <laughs> oh, just, cap, capital like letter it. on the porch. He's going to tell us what he thinks. Uh, Papa Sorrell, we hope you are having a good Wednesday uh, as we roll through House Divided here. Jeff Ketchum taking care of some things. I'm Chad Hastings. Thanks to Anwar Richardson for jumping in today. Got a couple more things to hit, including... Steven, I didn't forget about you. The USC 05 numbers, there's at least one in there I think Anwar is going to be really interested in uh, that, that, that I found. But here's something else Anwar is going to be interested in. He told y'all about his allergies oh. at the beginning. He was, look at him. See him sniffing? He's got the thing. Yeah, that's Paper. what he's, that's what he's dealing with. I'm going to help him out. I'm going to help all y'all out with sinus and snoring specialists. I had the allergy issues myself in 2017. I went into sinus and snoring specialists. They can test you for 
50 different allergies at once without needles, figure out what you're ultimately allergic to, and then they develop a treatment that helps you get rid of them for good. Over about a three-year period, those allergy drops, they're going to get rid of it for you. And they can put special stuff in those allergy drops that's focused to you. It's not just some cookie cutter, here, go cure your allergies. No, no. It's made for you based on what bothers you. And then you get rid of the allergies. They can get rid of your sleep apnea. They can deal with your snoring issues. And there's a lot of different options out there. Over 20 years of experience for Dr. Slaughter and the crew. They've got surgical and non-surgical options nobody else has. Check them out. And then right there at Parmer and Mopac. Who the hell can't find Parmer and Mopac? Even I know where Parmer and Mopac is. It's sinus and snoring specialists. Feel clear, rested, and healthy. There's that QR code for you. We appreciate those of you that have checked them out over at Sinus and Snoring Specialist. All right, Anwar. So uh, I'm going to pull this chat up because Stephen has come back and he's ready for punishment, but he won't actually get it. He says, I'm here for my punishment. LOL. A better way to say what I was trying to get across is I think we should run to open up the pass. Right now, I think our mindset is to pass to open the run. Okay, Stephen, hold that thought as we go through some of these numbers. Anwar, what Stephen wanted me to do, I was going to look up some basic numbers on 05 USC because he brought them up yesterday. Like, hey, should we be thinking more about 05 USC as the target instead of 2020 Bama? Because you and I have talked about 2020 Bama before. Um, I, when I was on Old Fashioned one day and we broke it all down about can Texas get to that level of a Steve Sarkeesian called season? But of course, 05 USC is a Steve Sarkeesian called season. So I looked up the number. Here's what Steven wanted. Steven wanted to know percentage of run, percentage of pass Okay. for, for those teams. Right, Steven, here, Steven, here's the interesting number. There's really not a difference among the three teams. The Bama team, the USC team, and last year's Texas team. Check it out. Bama 2020 through... 47% of the time and ran 53% of the time when you break down the numbers. Last year's Texas team, exactly the same. 53% run, 47% pass. Mm. You know what USC did in 05? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking what I was thinking. Oh, my God, it has to be way more runs. Uh-uh, it's not. 52% runs. 48% pass it. <laughs> it's like identical. It's actually, it's a slight bit less, but it's really the same thing. Anwar, here's the key with USC. The USC team in 2005, it's not that they ran a ton more. It's that they ran a ton better. Mm. Here's the number that's going to blow everybody's mind. Get ready. Texas last year ran the ball 527 times. That is two carries more than the USC team in 05. Now, do your quick math. USC played one less game. No playoff. No four-team playoff. When Texas and USC met that day, they were both going for 13-0, and if everybody remembers. It was 11 conference games. Then you play a championship, and then you went to, you went to the big dog. So it's one less game. Texas played 14 last year. USC played 13 games. Anwar, hmm. in one less game and mm -hmm. with two fewer carries, the USC team in 05 outrushed last year's Texas team by 742 yards. Damn. Wow. So Damn. when you... When you talk about that team, if you, if you, I won't go through all the details of it. The liner numbers, they're good. They're not going to blow your mind. They're not going to melt your brain. The numbers are about Bush and White and what they did with their runs. Reggie Bush averaged 8.7 a carry. You can be a Vince should have won the Heisman person, but please don't be a Reggie Bush didn't deserve the Heisman person. 8.7 a carry, Anwar. The man had 16 touchdowns, over 1,700 yards in, two, in 200 carries. Mm -mm. So it was an incredible year. So, Stephen, basically what I'm telling you is, now I, would, I didn't go look at literally the sequencing of what set up what. I know what you're saying. There are times when I feel like Sark doesn't, that he should do what you're saying. Start with a run, work towards a pass. 
But his his mindset, Anwar, I know you would agree. You watch every, these games closer than anybody. Sark's going to pass to run. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about it. But these numbers tell us that two of his most successful years call in plays, and last year, which is a pretty damn successful year, they went to the playoff, Sark will run a little bit more than he'll pass, but I think ultimately it'll be a pass to set up the run if he has a choice. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I just out of curiosity, um, Chad, mm-hmm. that that's uh, that's Bush and Lindell White, right? That that year, that is right? correct. Bush so and Lindell what, White. What 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 were their numbers? What 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 were their rushing numbers that year? I'm kind of curious. Okay, Bush ran 200 times. For 1740, that's 8.7 <laughs> a carry, and he had 16 touchdowns. Lindell White had 197 carries uh-huh. for 1302 yards, 6.6 average. He had 24 touchdowns. They ran for just over 3,000 yards and accounted for 40 touchdowns. Damn. I mean, <laughs> It's one of the greatest running back combos you are ever going to watch, which again brings us back to the biggest question of that night in January of 06. Yo, Pete, why wouldn't they both be on the field Mm. on the biggest play of the night? Just it, never mind. It's okay. Texas mm. fans are glad you did what you did. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And and uh, Kurt Bowles is will always will never live that one down. By the way, yeah. And and and, and hey, I'll still say it, Anwar. I've never been that upset. There's two things I'm not upset about with that game, but I'm also third party. I'm not a Longhorn fan. Mm. But two things that never make would have never would have made me mad as a Longhorn fan. A anybody who voted for Reggie Bush, go look at the numbers. Go back and feel what that season felt like. The man had an argument. He did. Mm -hmm. I would have voted for Vince, but the man had an argument. The other one, Anwar, is I will never get mad at Matt Leinert for what he said after that game. Ever. Ever. It was, I wouldn't have advised it if he was my boy. And he said, Chad, I'm going to walk to walk over there and say we're the better team. Eh, Matt, Matt, Matt. Like, calm down. But that team put like 600 yards up that night and they came that close to a three-peat, that close. They, If you have that game against Texas, against that Texas defense, and you come up that short, yeah. I'm going to let you say, man, it's a rough night because I still feel like we're the better team, but, you know, congrats to Texas. We'll live with it, whatever. Like, I'll, I'll let you have that one because that was an impressive yeah. performance anyway. Yeah, I, I would tell you this. I, I would I would tell you this. Um, <laughs> I kind of made this admission. If if it was me as a voter, and I've been a voter now, look, I'm a I this is a Hall of Fame vote right here. This is mm-hmm. what this is what it is when I was a pro football Hall of Fame voter for there you go. Years. So I've I've done voting. So the college voting, now we talk about my vote is one of whatever, like you know, I don't know, hundred votes, whatever the case may be. That's a lot. If all things were equal between the, the hometown guy that I cover. Versus some guy from California. I don't really. Ha- I, I'm not. I'm telling you this much. I'm not trying to be clever at that point. Mm-hmm. I got, I'm just going to say at that point, you know what? I live here and I'm just going to make my life. E- if all things are equal, I'm just going to go with I live here. I just want to make my life more simplistic over. I got I know what I'm going to do when everyone goes left. I'm going to go right. I'm just saying I probably I probably would have taken that way out. Also, one of the reasons why I actually don't like voting. I don't vote uh, like in, in Big 12 stuff. I, outside of polls, like the rankings from one through whatever, I don't vote for like uh, all conference teams or uh, preseason teams or anything like okay. that. I don't I don't participate in. Oh, because I just think it's it's BS. Because I don't, I don't know what the freaking center from Kansas State looks like versus the center of Texas Tech. And so I feel like you're just throwing crap together. I just don't do it. So uh, I let everybody else do it, but I don't participate in it because I take voting very seriously. Fair enough. Either way, outside of the voting part, if we could just get Reggie Bush his – Reggie Bush is kind of bad. Yeah, can we get him – let's get him the Heisman back. Even Tim Brown's on board now. I saw an article today. Tim Brown has spoken out as a fellow Heisman winner saying, can we please get the man his trophy back? I still can't believe Reggie Bush gave it up. 
Uh, but they need to get it back to him, get one back to USC. We all got to move on from uh, from that story. By the way, I covered Reggie the, so, uh, when he was actually at the part of with the Detroit Lions for at least a season or so. Okay, uh, and he was there in Detroit. Towards the tail end, really nice guy, just tremendously nice guy. I enjoyed talking. Really cool. This is a post Kim Kardashian dating and everything like that. And really, I just I enjoyed him. It was really cool to talk to all the time. Nice. Uh, by the way, uh, our man Rodolfo reminds you to like the damn video. Yes, like the video. Like on your way in, or maybe you know as you're getting established. That's what I try to do. Right as you're getting into the video, go ahead and just click that like button. Uh, look for that there and uh, and get it done. We appreciate you liking and subscribing and getting your notifications. Anwar, I appreciate your time. I'll take a little more of it if you want to buy or sell. You got some buy or sell ready oh, for me? Sell. I thought I'll be honest with you, Chad. Someone mm -hmm. like said something in the beginning because uh, I thought we were going two hours. So I was, uh, and then they're like, <laughs> it's like it's a. It someone said at the beginning to hour fifteen. I like, oh, I was I I was ready. I was I was ready to go for the long haul. But uh, like kind of like that, you know, Seinfeld when Kramer was uh, trying out the car for for Jerry, and they mm -hmm. just said it is going to keep going until it gets to E. I, that's what I thought we were doing. But we could do I some buy sell because I got some questions for you. Hey, there are some days at like 40, 42 minutes, catch looks like he's out of gas and he'll say, all right, that's it, close it up. So we're, sometimes you just never know. You never know what it's going to be. But you, we generally have been going around an hour, yeah, around an hour, something like that. Uh, yeah. You want to go first or second on buy or sell? Uh, I will go first. All right, hit it. Hey, here's my buy or sell for you. My first question to you is, Chad, the applause for Arch Manning on Saturday will be louder than any former player shown on the Jumbotron. Ooh. Buy or sell? I want it to be a sell, but I'll buy that. It's probably going to be a little bit louder. We can obviously think of the dignitaries that could be in the house that would get a pop. I'm not saying that, you know, if Vince, Ricky, Earl, you go down the list, right? National championship team members. If Casey Stuttered's down on that field and they throw him on the screen, he'll get a pop. It will get a pop. These guys are special. They're different. But this Arch Manning energy, I mean, it, it's a different thing. So I think he'll get a little extra pop. Absolutely. The, the Arch Manning touchdown. Will you be able to hear the applause from where you live? Yeah, it's going it will shake the shingles on top of my house and I'm damn near out in Elgin. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to feel it, guaranteed. I'm a, I'm expect I'm buying on this one, uh Chad. I remember what it was like when he came in. I think it was the Tech game last year. Oh yeah. And so it, here it is. It's late in the game, Chad. And so, you know, I, I'm in the press box and usually when games are kind of out of hand at that point, I'm really starting thinking about post game stuff. So I'm, I'm writing some things. I'm just, I'm not really paying attention that much because I know some backups are coming. So anyway, I hear the stadium just explode. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell happened? And I look and I see guys kind of on the field kind of standing around. I was thinking, did I miss a touchdown? Like, there's no way I missed a touchdown that fast. Well, and, and Anwar, let's be clear. Remember what the score was when he walked in? No. I mean, no. Your brain, based on what you do, what you do, you had yeah. no reason to expect noise. It was 50 to 7. Yeah, yeah. 50 yeah. to 7. A 99-yard touchdown pass shouldn't have created that sound. Yes. None. None. And yeah. so I'm looking, and I'm looking, I'm like, well, I see guys standing around. Like, I'm like, what am I What am I missing right now? I, I don't know what the hell it was. I mean, I know, my, McConaughey doesn't get that kind of applause. It was the loudest thing I've seen. And I realized Arch Manning had came into the game and everyone had lost their damn mind. Yep. <laughs> and there Absolutely. it was. I was like, oh. And then at that point, that's when I felt bad. And I was like, oh, poor Malik. Uh, that that had to hurt. That had to hurt a little bit. Yep. No doubt about it. No right. doubt. All right. You got one for me, uh, Chad? Oh, we're going to go back and forth? All right. We'll do well, it. Do I do, oh, do I do all of mine? Okay. That, okay. I'll, okay. I do all of mine? All right. We, so I'll do all, I'll yeah. Do yeah all we all usually do it that way. We can do either way. Whatever you want to okay, do. Okay. All right. All right. So here's my second one for you, uh, okay. Chad. I got five for you. Okay. Buy, buy or sell. Oklahoma should simply ask for Venmo donations instead of charging to attend its spring game. 
Uh, bye. You got to come up with something else. I said this yesterday. My team has done it both ways. I much prefer a free spring game. I think it's silly to charge for a spring game. Yeah, if you want to raise money, raise money. Figure out a way to do it. Donations for autographs outside. Do some kind of NIL connection. But I think it's I think it's goofy to charge your fans to attend your spring game. To attend you versus you. That's that's dumb. That's just dumb. I'll buy into that. Chad, when I first saw it, it's someone uh, I saw it on uh, Twitter uh, a couple of days ago. Um, I think it was like Doc Texas. You had something like that. I don't think it goes by Doc Texas anymore. But anyway, um, I thought, okay, this has to be Photoshop. I just can't be real. Someone yeah. photoshopped it. And I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going into it. And I had a couple more people. And then look, and I'm like, they are charging. For a free event, what should be a free event. And I saw Oklahoma fans defending it. And I was like, there has to be a better way to raise money. No, there, there's got to be. And uh, Anwar, it's not brand new. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Dion did it for his first one at Colorado. They charged mm-hmm. for that game and made a lot of money. Uh, again, my Aggies did it, I think, in the Sumlin years. It was the first time I ever saw it. I think Sumlin had it. And maybe one of the Jimbo years, I'd have to double check that one. And I think I might have actually paid for one. I think I may have like it was 10 or 15 bucks, I think maybe. So I'm not going to tell you that I stood on the line, but I'd much rather not, obviously. Um, But I was planning to go anyway. So I'm like, all right, fine, whatever. But yeah, you shouldn't charge for the spring game. All right. Next one for you. uh, Buy or sell. Guys who wear an Adidas shirt with Nike sneakers deserve to be ridiculed. (laughs) Buy Uh, or sell. Yeah. Uh, A a clothing snob. Buy or sell. I like it. (laughs) Guys who wear an Adidas shirt with Nike sneakers deserve to be ridiculed. If the... uh, If there's a team logo associated with either one, then it's a buy. If it's just a straight up Adidas shirt, Nike sneakers, I'll sell because I'm not, a, but I'm not a clothes snob either. I'm a grown man wearing a Whataburger shirt today, so I can't really get on any kind of a pedestal. <laughs> this is this would be interesting because I, I I guarantee you all the thirty and under crowd who they're going to be like that is just horrible, right? Mm-hmm. And then when you're the, the older crowd. And you just want to put on clothes that are comfortable. You don't care which is if your sneakers match with you know your your sweatpants and your shirt and everything. You're just you feel like, but I guarantee there's some other people out there who will find that thing absolutely egregious. Uh, So I'm indifferent towards that. All right, I got two more for you, Chad. All right, I got two more for you. You ready for this one? I'm ready. Buy or sell, Chad. There is one former co-worker at the horn. You'd like to punch in the jaw right now that because <laughs> you don't work for there. You're not with them anymore. There's one person. Now that you have you have total immunity, you can't get fired for them. There's one person at the horn that if you could see them today, you would absolutely punch them in the face. Hmm. Man, dude, this is this is such a wild one for me because as people that follow me on radio know, I've never actually been in a fight. I have never closed, I've never closed fist punched anyone ever. Um, so this would be the first time. You're asking me if I would do a punch to the jaw of a former co-worker now that I do not work there. Uh, I'm gonna sell. I'm going to sell because when I, I'm just going through the list in my head of all the people I worked with on a day to day basis. What about? No, no, gonna, no I, I don't think any of them. I don't think any I would. The morning, any of the morning show guys? No, I don't think not a punch to the jaw. No, no. What about Trey? No. You no. thought about it. You had to think about it. I've never thought about punching him in the face. I'm not a punch in the face guy. What about Kevin Dunn? What about Kevin Dunn? No, 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 absolutely not. Now, Kevin's Kevin? the one that Kevin would tell you I need an ass kicking. He said that for years. Kevin thinks I need to be beaten up at some point, but no, I would not. I would absolutely not not punch K. Not Dunn Bucky in the, or Aaron, not either one of those. Nope. No, I would not punch either one of those. They've never given me a reason to punch them in the jaw, especially what about Bucky. Behind the scenes, like there, there, there had to be someone in a meeting or something like that. Like I mean, someone was like, "Hey, I need you out for 
an event appearance on Sunday night at 9 p.m. There, you know, there's a there's a couple I might want to give a piece of my mind, but I don't think a punch to the jaw is going to happen. It's just again because I've never delivered one, so I would hate to think that would be my first. My first punch to the jaw would be that. No, nah, probably not. I won't be that vindictive. Is there any current people? <laughs> no, David, that is not doing that. All right. Uh, and la- my last one to you. Last one. This is this is a more simple, simple one and fun one. Uh, right. Buy or sell. Cole Lord, hearing Coach Sarkeesian mention him on Tuesday, made his year. Oh, you're damn right. That's a buy. Got to be a buy. Got to be a buy. As somebody that knows what it's like to be down a totem pole a little bit and just get a little recognition, that's like oxygen to us, man. We love that stuff. Like, you know who's doing a really good job? You know, it's like, what? What did he say? Is he, is he talking about me? Yeah, I'm sure Lord loved that. I, I bet he called parents, friends, mm. if he's got a girlfriend, whatever. Like, I'm yes, I'm sure that he did that. Um, yeah, that, that had to, had to, absolutely had to make his year. And it probably, you know, if he was thinking about when he gets time to maybe think about transferring, he probably won't. It won't like that. That has made his everything. He's like, coach knows my name, right? Just right. He said, and, and he knew my stats. Like he knew I went five for five. Like, you know, the only people who knew that was like Cole Lord and AJ Milwee, right? And he probably just thought like, those are the only people who know that. And maybe some guys in the room, you know, he calls his parents and this and that. He doesn't get to travel. And then the coach just to like randomly shout you out after mentioning Quinn, Arch, Cole Lord. He's got to be the happiest dude. I If I was him, I would have screenshot every mention of me on Twitter. I would have put together some online portfolio. I could not have been more happy if I was Cole Lord. That's an absolute buy for me. Yeah, I think it'd be great if Lord called one of his buddies and said, man, I'm glad he left after those first five throws because that sixth throw sucked. Oh, my God. I'm glad he missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, All right. So those are my five by yourself for you, Chad. What you all got right. for me? All right, here we go, Anwar. We'll start it with a nice nerdy one. Buy or sell, number one. In 2020, Najee Harris had 251 in carries. In 05, Reggie Bush had 200. You think a Texas running back will have 200-plus carries in 2024? Easy buy. Easy buy. Yeah? Yeah. No matter what, you know, you, as much as I like to, I, I, Sark, Sark does a really good job, I think, of making sure guys get reps and runs um, before the season. Uh, but then when it comes down to it, he goes with his guys. I remember a couple of years ago, Roshan, John, Roshan Johnson was getting a lot of love uh, mm-hmm. behind the scenes. Um, and they really, and they liked Roshan. And you saw they, they did utilize Roshan. At the end of the day, they said, okay, yeah, but Bijan is going to get like 200 plus carries. And Jonathan Brooks, if he doesn't get injured, probably gets that 200 plus as well. So, um, no, I think it's, I think definitely when it's all said and done, there will be someone that gets to 200 plus. And even if it's CJ Baxter, that will be his guy that he rides with. That's fine. But he, his history usually suggests he has a bell cow slash workhorse. And I would not be surprised to see that again. So, it's an absolute buy for me. Yeah, got Brooks to 187, even with the injury. He was there. He's, I mean, he's right there. He's 13 away uh, from that number. Reggie Bush, 8.7 a carry. That's just going to be in my head big. all day today. It's so big. silly. All right, Anwar, let's go to the hardwood. Uh, buyer spell number two, East play-in games tonight in the NBA. You will take the Sixers and the Hawks to win. Uh, Bye, because I don't know who they're playing. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so, the Sixers are hosting Miami. Okay. And Atlanta is at Chicago. Uh, coin toss for me. I did watch the Lakers game last night, though. Uh, mm-hmm. I did watch the Lakers play in game. And I watched about the first half of the Golden State game. And I already knew that they were going to win. I can just tell and that they, when Sacramento got out to that lead, I, I could tell. And I've watched Golden State play this year. Yeah. Uh, and I knew they weren't holding much. And so, uh, they're going to have to totally disband that team. And, and I've got to watch the Lakers uh, go. And, man, they were doing hot. They were doing well. And then the injury happened to Zion. And that that little thing, Oof. I think, ends up being the thing that tilts it for, for in favor of the Lakers. Uh, so, yeah, I'll go ahead and take the Sixers, Sixers and the Hawks uh, for no other reasons than you mentioned them. 
uh, and I have no, <laughs> nothing other scientific to, to give you. So, and, and usually when people, I'll say this, usually when people don't know as much about the sports thing and they bet, they usually do really well. So, so those people, when you, when, in your, yeah. when you work in an office and they have like the NCAA brackets, it's never the people who know sports that win right. those things. It's always, it's always someone from accounting, no disrespect to anyone in accounting, uh, that, that said like, they, they, they go off of colors and names and that, and they win the brackets. But everyone else who analyzes it doesn't win. So go with Sixers and Hawks and can you thank me tomorrow. Yeah, my favorite story on that, Anwar, is a woman that went to the Indy 500 years ago. She bet a decent amount of money on the guy she thought was the best looking when she saw the driver pictures, and he uh -huh. won, and she won a bunch of money. <laughs> it's just, it's just the Got less it. scientific you get, the easier it is, I promise you. But the more the, the the times I've actually done great in NCAA bracket pools is usually when I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Yeah. And I usually do really well. There you go. All right, uh, Anwar, here we go. Back to the spring game. Every yeah. fan's thinking about it. Buy or sell number three. Your first play of the spring game would be a bomb to John T. Cook. Buy. I like, I like that. First of all, you got nothing to lose, right? So mm -hmm. why not just air it out? Why not just because this is this is this it's a practice, but you're also giving people, you know, a show as well. Steve Sarkeesian mentioned it. He's like, hey, the, I mean, we're giving people a glimpse of the, the the future and things to look forward to. So why not? I, yeah, sure. The easy thing to do is to hand off to CJ Baxter. I get that. But yeah, if I was him. Man, yes, everybody, just 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 run, just run, and I would I'm bombing out to John T. Cook and see what he could come up with. So yeah, give us give us some excitement, give us something fun to look forward to. I would love to see that. And then for John T. Cook uh, to then go school, get into the end zone uh, and then ask about ask is should anyone hit the panic button? So there, I mean, I would love that. <laughs> uh, side. Side question: Is it Baxter that gets that first carry of the spring game for you? Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be CJ. It's okay. CJ. That's his guy. That's it his is. boo. That's hey, his. That's his boo. You, and by you know. the way, let's cl let's clarify because I think Catch slightly misspoke yesterday. If you listen carefully, when Sarkeesian answered the question yesterday about running backs, he technically mentioned Savion Red. He didn't mention Savion Red in a way I'd want to be mentioned if I was Savion Red because uh -huh. he just referenced him as coming from receiver and working at two different positions. It wasn't the biggest compliment. He did say his name, though. Uh, so we're still kind of watching for could Savion be one of those guys that uh, finds his way into the portal. But he did mention him yesterday. We'll see if there's any Savion Red at the, uh, at the spring game. All right, Anwar, I would not have brought this one up except that you did end up in the chat during a conversation earlier this week mm -hmm. on House Divided. So, okay. buy or sell number four, you're not ashamed to say you love a good rap battle. Bye. First of all, there's no other genre that does battles. You never hear of a country battle, right? <laughs> you never, you know, you you know, you, you never hear of a country yeah. diss song to somebody else, right? That that doesn't happen in any other genre, right? Yeah. But I, really, I would love to hear like a country diss. That would right? be great, right? Banjo starts up. Here's why Bill's a dick. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. It do, it doesn't. I would love like the Garth like diss song, a diss track right especially when garth was on top but i love a good rap battle um they all you know go go they go back you know to, to when rap first started and that was about really kind of battling to now so yes like this whole drake versus everybody battle i've watched not only have I listened to the song uh probably eight to ten times because it's so clever i watched the reactions to it I waited for K Dot to come back. I know people got fooled by the AI thing, but yeah, I I love it. I think that's what that's what the music is about. You know, as long as it doesn't get violent and it's just about the lyrics, mm -hmm. absolutely. I love cleverness. I love wittiness. Um, you know, I I love all those things. So yes, absolutely, I love it. And I feel like Drake, outside of Pusha T has pretty much won every bat, rap battle that he's been in. Eminem has pretty much won everyone has been in. So I, I love it. It makes me excited to listen to the genre. Now, that being said, I'm real, as an older person, I don't listen to a ton of modern rap. Mm -hmm. doesn't speak to me. 
uh, it speaks to another generation. Like that's just, I'm older now. So now I got my music, but mm -hmm. this draws me in because I, I, I enjoy it. So absolutely, it yeah. is a buy for me. It really is kind of a pro wrestling promo meets musical fight. It really is kind of entertaining. All right, Anwar, speaking of music, we're going to finish with this one. There's a, pause right. for, there's a pause for effect, and then we're going to see how much of this trivia you know. Buy or sell right. number five, Victoria Beckham turns 50 today. Everybody just let that one sink in for a second. You can tell me which Spice Girl she was and name three oh. of the other four Spices. That's a sell. That's a that's a that is that is a sell. I'll be honest with you. Never got into the Spice Girls, mm -hmm. and so um, I, I I kid. I know there was like a really was like Crazy Spice or something like that. <laughs> there really should there should have been. It wasn't crazy. You're close. Who was the black girl? What was her name? Uh, that was Scary Spice. Scary. Okay, Scary Spice or something like that. But yeah, so Mel no, B I never got. I right, never, Mel B was Scary Spice. No, I never got into um, it. In fact, I'll be honest with you, this is the closest I've come to Spice, which is yesterday my my son was watching something. My five-year-old, soon to be six-year-old, was watching something on TV or whatever. He goes, that's Ice Spice. And I go, mm. what? He's like, that's Ice Spice. I was like, how the hell do you know who Ice Spice is? He's like, from YouTube. So that's that's that my okay. that that's as close as I've come to anything Spice Girl related. Okay, clearly she wasn't part of the group. So who are the two? Tell me who they are. Two, okay, so I'm gonna tell you are. who they are in a second. Let me make sure I understand this. You're telling me that right now you can identify Ice Spice, but you couldn't tell me any of the the monikers of the of any of the Spice Girls. No. Okay. And and and, and I only know Ice Spice through my kids, and I okay. don't really know what she raps about, and I don't really know what her lyrics are about. Let me be clear. I wrote all this down. I am not doing this all from memory. So Victoria Beckham was Posh Spice. Posh Spice. Okay. Posh Spice. Mel B was Scary Spice. That was my favorite okay. of the Spice Girls. I like uh -huh. Mel B. I remember I like, her. Like that attitude. Emma was Baby Spice. Okay. With the blonde hair. Melanie Melanie C was okay. Sporty Spice. Sporty Spice. Okay. And last but not least, Jerry, I think her last name was like Hollowell or something. Jerry was Ginger Spice because she had red hair. Okay, so what were what was their biggest hit song? I'm assuming it's the tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Wouldn't that be the biggest one? If it's, it's the one that popped in my head when you asked. Oh, okay. That's that was them. That was, was that them. There was girls? also the "If You Want to Be My Lover." Is that the same? That's song? the same song. That's the same song. The same song. The "Wanna Be," the one I want to be. I got it. That's got to be the biggest one. They had, they had a they had a few, but I think that's the one that that's the only one I can tell you right now. You know, I'll be honest with you. When it comes to like uh, groups like that, I was probably more more into like R and B kind of women's groups. You know, so like the the In Vogue kind of things, like that. You know. The, that was probably more of like the stuff that they don't really do those kind of things nowadays. Unfortunately, they don't. Yeah. There's no. There's no real good R and B groups like slow jam singers nowadays. Like those. Those days are just gone. So I never. But it never. The hell, it's not a lot of great groups now. But I never got into. I never got into that. Like SWV and Invo, like that. That's kind of the stuff I liked. There it is. That was really we be that was a borderline old man conversation getting going right there. You know what? There's not enough of Chad. <laughs> Back I'm, in my day, they made real music, you know. I missed it when the whole band would wear suits. All right, get him out of here. <laughs> Just what are, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, when choreography and they were spinning around. That's by the way, I Cotton asked, he goes, Did uh, does Onward know Posh is with Beckham? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I know. Okay. Beckham. Hey, Anwar, I'm just telling you, if you're going to be a legit soccer dad, you got to know some of the basics, right? You got to have, I'm, I'm sure you got your, you know, Ronaldo's and Messi's covered, but you probably need to know that David Beckham is married to Victoria. Yeah. You probably I need mean, to know I that. know he was a really good soccer player, but I, I his, his wife, I didn't, I wasn't too familiar with, but you're right. Um, I probably current, I'm more, I'm more current day. 
than historic at this moment. So, yeah, I, yeah we, we were watching like PSG uh, play yesterday, you know, like the kids and I. So, yes, and we saw, you know, Mbappe score twice. Like, that's what we're doing. So, okay. you're right. There's a historic portion that I need to catch up on, but I still feel like I'm trying to catch up on the, the current stuff with the kids. So, yes. it's a little so, bit, it's a little bit tougher. Happy birthday to Victoria. She's one of my 74 crowd people. She hits 50 just before me. I'll do that later this year. Victoria Woo! just looks a little bit better than me at 50. Just just a little bit better. What, when's uh, uh, when, when you turn 50? What month? Uh, oh, it's Christmas Day, my friend. Oh, that's right. That's right. You and Jesus. I forgot. Christmas Day. That's right. I'll hit 50 and uh, Jesus will be, what, slightly older than that? I think he, he's, he looks way better than me right now. Thousand years or something like that. Oh, so. He looks so much better than me. I can't even tell you. Yeah, I think two thousand and actually two thousand and twenty four would be. Yeah, right in, yeah. in AD, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, like, I learned something in Bible school. <laughs> also, also for all you pro wrestling freaks like me, today Roddy Piper would have been seventy. Rest in peace to Rowdy Roddy. Oh, the, I loved, I loved the, him. I used to like the Friday night wrestling. Was that main event? Uh, uh, yes. Friday night or Saturday night's main event? They had that too, right? Friday night one. Or was yeah. it Sat? What was Friday night? They had Saturday night main event. Saturday night's main event sometimes would be on instead of SNL. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. I, 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 one day I'll find for you, I had a I, I had a card where they came to Lakeland, Florida uh, for main event. And I actually had a chance to watch like Hulk Hogan and Savage, all those guys. I'll find it somewhere in, my, in the archives and I'll share that with you. Yeah, one of the best heels of all time. Yeah. <laughs> Just when they think they have all the answers, I change the questions is one of the greatest things a wrestler's ever said. Roddy yes. Piper, one of the best talking heels of all time. All right, Anwar, I appreciate the time, sir. Thank you for jumping in. Anything else you need to hit today on House Divide? Anything you want to leave us with on House Divide? You can say something real controversial and never have to deal with it on tomorrow's show. Well, I, I still have to deal with it <laughs> tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning. No, I have I had a I had a good time, man. I had a good time uh, here uh, with everyone. Uh, nearly over six hundred uh, people in the chat. Nearly almost seven hundred, rather, uh, people who are watching. So, you know, thank you, thank you to Sorrell. Thank you for everybody supporting the show. Thank you uh, for yourself, Chad, for all the hard work that you do, uh, not only in front of the camera but behind the scenes. So, one hundred percent. Uh, appreciate you and everything you do. I don't have anything controversial other than um, I will leave you with this at mm -hmm. Friday, uh, the at the pitch, uh, probably worth mentioning before we head out of here. Uh -huh. uh, the spring game mix, I'll throw it up there. Uh, there I'll be there. You want to talk, tell everybody about it? Absolutely. Spring game mixer tabbing over at the pitch six to nine. That's right. Uh... It's like a weird Brady Bunch thing. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, I'm looking forward to it because I've never been to the pitch. And uh, yeah, six to nine, seven o'clock, we're going to do a QA. and a uh, It's a, basically a live modcast. And then the rest of us are there to hang out, you know, and watch a live modcast because Ketch and Anwar and Jason and Alex, I believe, are all going to be there. So come on out, ask your questions. They may be a little juiced up. They may have a little bit of a, of a drink or two in them, and they'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And I don't think there's rain expected, but we'll double check the weather on that one too. Apparently, we need to be checking weather on everything all of a sudden. Uh, but that is coming up on Friday evening. Thanks to the pitch for having us out. Couple other quick preview items. This afternoon at four, we're going to get you the recruiting hour. Jason Sukamel is just about ready to put in a future cast for Texas on a particular recruit. We'll tell you who that is, plus who was in town this week already, who was in town last weekend, and who's coming for the spring game. We'll have it all for you at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Then, tonight on The Outsiders at 8.30, we're going to look into quarterback scripts for the spring game. Ooh. Chance Mock and Adam Dunn are going to discuss it on the Outsiders tonight, apparently they both have thoughts on what's real and what's not at the spring game. Wait, don't tell me they're constructing the spring game just for my entertainment. How dare they? How dare coaches do that? We'll get into that whole discussion tonight at about 8.30.
Thanks to everybody for jumping in the specs chat. Uh, we appreciate you liking, subscribing, and getting notifications for Orange Bloods Live. And also remember to check out Anwar and Alex every morning with the Old Fashioned at 9 a.m. They'll be doing it tomorrow at 9 a.m. Until tomorrow at high noon. Maybe Catch will be back. We'll see. Y'all be good. Stay dry. Check your weather if you need to, and we'll let you know if it's going to rain for the spring game. All the latest information will be right here on Orange Bloods Live. Have a good one. Take care.